An entitled racist couple keep trying to evict the Asian couple that live above them, constantly making complaints and making up false reports against them just to try and get them in trouble to force them to move. But after dealing with this for so long, I decided to get revenge. So I set up this entitled racist couple, catching them red-handed in their lies, resulting in them getting evicted and forced to leave our properties. And I've never been more satisfied with this level of revenge in my life. Here's what happened. So I used to work in a private security field. I wasn't a mall cop or anything like that, but I was highly trained, skilled, and armed as a security person. We worked residential buildings and complexes that were very high-end, like $200,000 cars in the parking garage high-end. Now, places like this are Karen Central. Imagine apartments full of entitled Karens and entitled teenagers. Now, the company owner was awesome. A cop as a regular job, he understood what we faced. His advice was to be nice but put the hammer down if you have to, and don't take anyone's garbage. Also, that if we didn't get two complaints a month about us being worthless, then we are not engaging the residents enough. So, this is important to the revenge. Each supervisor had 10 to 15 properties under their control. Regular officers patrolled them, but we were in charge of helping with evictions, as well as attending town halls on security issues, deciding how an officer patrols or updated what areas are being a problem, or which ones needed checking. Overall, I had 12 to deal with. Now, in this one apartment complex, we had a couple always calling us. For context, we have an emergency line that's open from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. And these people would get on there and cry about their upstairs neighbors constantly. It was a list of things they just changed. From stomping to music, sometimes they would be talking too loudly, or they would be cooking something that smells badly. Their dog would go number one on their balcony and it would drip onto theirs. Valid complaint, sure. But we never found any kind of evidence of that. When they saw that we were starting to question if they were real complaints or not, they changed their tactics and they became incredibly racist. The couple above them were a sweet, wonderful, middle-aged Asian couple. The husband was an immigrant and the wife was a born and raised American. These stupid, entitled neighbors had only talked to the husband, so they assumed, as all racists do, that they both had to be immigrants. So this couple started making comments about those Asians, complaining that because they're in America, why can't they cook American food. They even at one point said they're afraid to be in the parking garage when one of them is driving in. And while this really angered me, those comments alone weren't enough for an eviction. The only thing I could do was have my officers put exact phrasing in the report. I did ask the property manager about the comments and she said if they didn't say them to the residents and the residents didn't complain, there wasn't much she could do. So I tried to think of some way to get them evicted. Not only were they lying to get the people above them evicted, but they were calling in false things and wasting the officer's time just to respond. And these people didn't just call once in a while. They called sometimes twice in a night, usually five to eight times a week. But eventually, the opportunity was handed to me and I took it. The Asian couple called me during the day and informed me that they were going out of the country. They were going to China for two weeks and no one would be in their apartment. They told me this just in case their downstairs neighbors start complaining so that I would know they were lying. They also asked to check their door once a night to make sure it was locked and not broken into. I then informed the Asian couple not to tell their neighbors or anybody else that they were leaving besides myself. Only tell the property manager. So we had a patrol meeting that night and the officers didn't work one specific region. So I told them all my plan. I wanted them to respond each time they call and write down exactly what they said happened and also any racial terms no matter how minor they might seem. Mark the report urgent and then send it out. We had an online system for all businesses. Emails, schedules, report submitting, you get the idea. So away we go. During those 14 days, they complained 18 times. Everything was documented and I took it to the manager. She looked it over and said, let's evict them. As a side note, the clients get charged more for emergency response than they do for regular patrols, meaning that their lies were costing them money. So there was no HOA because these are all rentals. In this situation, myself, the property manager, and the tenant sit down at a table. All the charges for eviction are read off, and if the eviction is security related, then I say what the violations have been broken, while also relaying the facts about what went on based on the reports we gave. And this is where the reports come into play. Then, at this meeting, the tenants have the right to speak and ask any questions. The property manager then decides what happens next. Do they stay or do they go? So they were sent a formal letter stating that they were 
facing eviction and had 10 days to set up a meeting. If they didn't, the eviction will be processed. They set one up, and when I get there, the entitled couple and the manager are already present. The wife immediately digs into me because I was armed. Uniforms for those situations are dress shirts, slacks, a tie, and one weapon in one magazine. I just politely informed her that this was my uniform and it was not her call to make. She tried to say she felt uncomfortable and wanted to reschedule, but the manager said this happens now or I will evict you. They then agreed to continue. Now for legal purposes overall, these sessions were recorded by video. That way the tenant couldn't lie in eviction court or try to sue. In front of me there were all 18 reports and I went over each one of them. The time, the date, who called the apartment number. I also read out each line telling them to tell me what they feel is false and also inform me of what they think is true. The only things they said that weren't true were the racial terms they absolutely used. At the end of each report, I then verify with this couple that the report is accurate aside from the racial comments that they absolutely made. And I got a yes every single time. About the seventh one down, I think the wife finally caught on. She started complaining that I was dragging it out. But I just smiled politely and reminded her that this was my time and she would have ample opportunity to object and ask me questions. But only after I was done. And then I went through the rest and let them build a defense. Then, after I was done getting the admitted lies, I informed them that the tenants in said apartment were actually out of the country at the time of these 18 reports. And that the tenants provided proof that they were actually gone and my officers checked the apartments one time a night and confirmed that it was absolutely empty. Then, I smiled pleasantly and I ended my part. But the look on their face was a mix of anger and fear. They didn't have a defense, basically saying myself and the manager were choosing immigrants over Americans. Oh, did I mention the manager is an immigrant? And trust me, that went over like a hand grenade in a collection plate. Once they said that, she stopped them and told them what she was. And that made matters worse because they said she was just taking up for her own kind. During this, I'm just calm and collected. But inside my mind, I'm thinking to myself, oh no, that was a mistake. After a few more racial remarks, the manager just stopped them and said guilty as charged. And she would process the eviction paperwork with the courts in the morning. Long story short, they were given 14 days. And from what I heard, the judge gave them 30 until they called him a racial name as well. I was able to call the nice Asian couple and let them know that it was over. And they didn't have to worry because we would no longer respond to calls about their apartment for the next 14 days. And this is all leading up until the eviction came through and the bad tenants finally left. But on the other hand, they were welcome to call any time if they needed help or had any kind of issue. The security officers want to help so badly, but we are so limited by either laws or property management rules, or both. So you know what? It's nice to do some good when it's placed in front of you. Absolutely unbelievable. I can't imagine living in that kind of environment and having someone make a report against me every single day, every single night. Like, that is honestly crazy to me. They were clearly abusing the system, and they were obviously trying to get somebody in trouble for something they didn't do. Not to mention the blatantly racist comments that they were making. I mean, seriously, what is wrong with people? How can you possibly have any kind of conscience and seriously make those kind of comments based on racist stereotypes? Like, seriously, these people had some problems. And the original poster in this story is so smart. They set this up perfectly. They basically set a trap for this racist couple, and these people fell right into it. I mean, talk about lining everything up perfectly and getting exactly what you want. Because you know what? These people absolutely had it coming. They deserve to get evicted. They absolutely should have been gone a long time ago. So it is truly satisfying to see them finally get caught for the racist, horrible people that they truly are. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for not forgiving my childhood bully? So I am bullied a lot at school. I'm used to it by now, but it's really annoying. So I first want to start off by calling this bully who's the subject of this story by the name of John. John is not his real name. John is very annoying and very obnoxious. He is constantly yelling in class and throwing things around, and his friends are just like him. John also does not respect my boundaries. When I was younger, John would purposefully exclude me from fun games and call me names. But now that we're older, he chooses for more annoying bullying. He is the worst during math class. He will throw things like pens at his friends, and he seems to have bad aim because he ends up hitting me. 
He apologizes, but I don't know how sincere these apologies are. So yesterday, when it happened, I decided to keep the pencil that he threw. A few months ago, I was walking to my locker, and when I was a few steps away, he ran over and opened his arms for a hug and leaned forwards. I don't like being touched by people I don't like, so I physically went, nope, and I moved backwards. He laughed and turned away, and then when I went to take another step, he did it again. He then laughed, apologized, and walked away. Another time, during math class, I shouted out an answer, and he glared at me and shouted, it's not a competition. And then a few minutes later, he shouted an answer before I could and turned around with a weird smirk on his face. I said back to him, oh, I thought this wasn't a competition, but he just ignored me. Once I accidentally said the wrong answer and he shouted at me saying, that's wrong. And then later he gave a wrong answer too. And I said to him, um, that's not correct. It's actually this answer. The teacher is a very nice person and doesn't really mind if we accidentally get a wrong answer. John is also very manipulative and also pretends to be nice. And then when you don't accept his kindness, you are made out to be a jerk. He is also very rude to my friends as well. One example of this is when we're handing out worksheets. He will hold mine in front of my face until I grab it. Unlike how everyone else just places it down on the table. When I say to him, you can put it down, you know, he responds by saying, I was just trying to be nice. It's for these reasons and many others that I hate him. He even has a girlfriend and I don't know how she likes him. Today, he said to me, I like your haircut. And he often does these insincere compliments. He is just very manipulative in that way. I ignored John and then he said to me, why are you being so rude to me? And I respond to him by saying, me, the rude one? You bullied me in primary school and you don't respect my boundaries or anything. He then said to me, I said I was sorry. But I said back to him, well, you haven't earned my forgiveness yet. So honestly, am I the jerk for not forgiving my bully? You are not the jerk in this situation. This guy absolutely is a giant bully and you don't owe him any kind of forgiveness in the slightest. This guy is clearly going out of his way to try and mess with you. He is making advances at you that are really uncomfortable and he is singling you out specifically just to try and mess with you. And it's not like you haven't said anything to him. You've made it very clear that you're uncomfortable with the way he's talking to you and you really just don't want him to bother you anymore. But even through all of that, he still continues. He's clearly trying to push your buttons and that is so unfair. I'm surprised you haven't escalated this further by talking to a teacher or a guidance counselor of some kind or even bringing your parents into the situation. Like the way John's treating you is not normal. This is not okay behavior and you don't deserve to go through school like that. So for me personally, that's what I would do. I would go to my teacher and say I want another seat. I would go to the principal or somebody else that can correct this behavior and say, hey, I want this taken care of. I'm tired of John bothering me in class and he seriously won't leave me alone. And then you can literally go from there. And sure, he's not going to like it, but you know what? If he didn't want to get in trouble and have these teachers up on him all the time, then maybe he shouldn't have done that to you in the first place. Like if people want to be sorry for the way they've acted, they seriously need to mean it. And this guy is not sincere at all. He doesn't mean it when he says he's sorry. He's just doing that to try and mess with you. And the more you respond to that, the more he's going to do it because he thinks it's funny and it's probably funny to his friends. So in my opinion, it would do you some good to not only talk to a teacher or guidance counselor, but also to maybe just ignore him and be like, no, you're not going to be involved in my life because this guy's a straight up bully. And not only have you done nothing wrong, but also he should be held accountable for his actions. Am I the jerk for how payment was handled for my wedding? Here's what happened. So I am genuinely conflicted on this as I see both sides of it. So getting feedback would really be nice. So I recently got married at a venue about 200 miles away from where I live. So many things were done virtually and I had not met many of these people in person that I planned the wedding with. For payments, our venue required a deposit, a payment six months before our wedding date, then a final payment once the charges were finalized. And this was based on how many people were showing up. Our first two payments were made as scheduled with no issues. We finalized our headcount and settled on the final amount for all services rendered. The final amount was about $15,000. The vendor allowed payment through a check by mail or someone dropping off a check in person. Being from out of state, we opted for option two. I sent out a check to the venue through online bill pay and got confirmation the payment was to be delivered the day of the wedding, which was a Saturday. I had a confirmation number from my bank saying that the payment was sent and money was taken out of my account. The wedding was wonderful, by the way, and I enjoyed the next day, which was Sunday with my husband. We received a text message from the vendor that she still had not gotten the check. I looked at my bank account and I see the check was sent with a delivery date of the next day, which would be a Monday. I shared a screenshot 
screenshot of this with the vendor, including the confirmation number. I even offered to call my bank with her on the line as confirmation. I offered to Venmo or Zelly her the money. She insisted on a physical check, which I do not have as I'm out of town. She then told us she would withhold our items that we left behind. I explained again how the check would be there tomorrow, and I offered Venmo or Zelly again, and she refused to accept anything except for a physical check. I had to spend over 30 minutes on the phone with my bank just to stop the payment on the check, which by the way cost me 50 bucks. Then I had to transfer money to my mom so her check would clear. Then I had to drive back to my mom's house to physically get the check and then back to the venue itself just to hand deliver the check to this person. When we got to the venue, the manager, who was not the person I had been texting with, thanked me for the check and told me not to worry as it would be put into the lockbox and they don't cash checks until Tuesday. At this point, I asked why I had to spend the day after my wedding running around town when my checks wouldn't be cashed for a few days and the original check was due for tomorrow. We argue back and forth, but we were not yelling, just trying to understand what happened. Now, I 100% agree that the vendor must be paid for services rendered, but I am frustrated. I had to spend the morning after my wedding running around just to do this garbage, only to learn that it wouldn't be cashed until Tuesday, which would be after my payment was to arrive. So am I the jerk for being upset that I had to spend my morning doing this garbage, as well as arguing with the manager when I dropped off the check? First off, you need to pay for services rendered. So the fact that your check wasn't going to show up on time and meet their requirements is honestly on you. If anything, you should have brought a check to the wedding. Like seriously, it is your own fault for not paying these people on time. When they decide to cash those checks is honestly up to them. That is literally nobody else's business except for theirs. And the fact that you would try to justify you being late on your payments simply because they're not going to cash it until Tuesday is honestly really entitled and it shows that you really did not plan far enough ahead. I mean, you knew this was going to cut close. Why even bother sending a check in if you know there's a possibility that this could be delayed until Monday? And honestly, you should have seen this coming. I mean, delivering a check on a Saturday, which is a non-business day, by the way, is really wishful thinking in my opinion. And the fact that you live 200 miles away just doesn't even matter in this situation. You easily could have brought a check with you for the wedding itself and handed it to the vendor right then and there. So yeah, the original poster in this situation absolutely is the jerk and they should have planned better for their wedding. And that is absolutely not the venue's fault in the slightest. I left my boyfriend that I was dating because he never told me that he had two different kids from two different moms. And now I feel utterly betrayed and I don't know what to do. In October of 2022, I left my boyfriend of almost three years due to emotional and physical problems. I was already checked out of the relationship for a while because of what was happening between us. And I am pretty well off for my age due to the work field that I'm in. So I was able to move out soon after. Fast forward to February and I met a new guy. We'll call him Anthony. That is not his real name. He seemed to be perfect. I struggle a lot with my mental health and he seemed to understand or at least try to help with everything and would never get frustrated when I struggled and communicated that he would never hurt me because of something I couldn't control. He validated everything I felt, which was new to me, and he made me much more accepting of who I was and what I was struggling with. We were really happy together and made it official in April of 2023. Anthony also struggles with his mental health, and I was able to help him get back on his feet throughout this time. I helped him get a job and go back to his therapy appointments. He met all of my friends and family, and it really seemed like I was finally going to feel safe and happy rather than constantly putting up my guard. One night, while out to see a movie with him about a month after making us official and a few days after his first time posting a picture of me, I got an Instagram direct message during the movie. I opened it up to see a message from his ex-girlfriend letting me know that he has two different kids from two different moms. On top of this, he hasn't paid child support. This was never mentioned to me at all. I made him leave the theater and I confronted him and said he was going to tell me eventually, but was scared since it was a new relationship and he has every intention of helping his kids, but he needed to get back on his feet. Out of anger, I made him take me home and leave me alone. Once I calmed down, we talked about it and I told him that we could be friends eventually. He explained that he still supports his kids, but they live out of state. He is heartbroken and doing everything he can to fix it between the two of us, but I still don't trust him for not telling me about that. I still have feelings for him, but I'm so conflicted and I feel like I'm stringing him along. I want to be with him. And on top of this, I'm making the mistake of seeing him still and keeping it a secret from everybody else. I don't know if I'm making a mistake by even still seeing him. What should I do? Honestly, this is kind of a deal breaker for me. If 
I was in your situation, I would be very upset that he hid the fact that he not only has kids, but he's also not paying for child support. That is such a red flag, it's not even funny. Like, if he can't take care of his own children in their time of need, who's to say that he's not going to do the same thing to you in any kind of future relationship? Like, let's say you get into the picture and have a kid with him. That would then be three women he has kids with, and you would be yet another person who's not getting child support for children that he might not even care about. I mean, that is so toxic, it's not even funny. So personally, I would keep my guard up. I would be very hesitant of exploring any kind of relationship with him, and that would personally be a big roadblock in stopping me from having any kind of relationship with that guy. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.